Support for this video is provided by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build your online presence and help run your business. Stick to the end for more information. There's been a lot of talk recently surrounding Instagram. How addictive is it? How bad is it for our mental health, etc.? But I'm gonna throw in one more question. Is Instagram bad for the travel industry? Um, no. You might be saying, Instagram and travel go hand in hand. It's like salt and pepper, peanut butter and honey, my dog and my face whenever I lie down on the ground. Some of the most popular content on Instagram is travel. It's inspired people all around the world to get out more and see more. And I would say, without any actual firm proof, Instagram has helped travel destinations such as Bali take off in terms of tourism. In the past 10 years, Indonesia has seen an increase of tourists from half a million to over 15 million, and a whopping 14 million of them went to none other than Australia's favorite place to get cheap alcohol, Bali. Bali's tourism has exploded over the years, and you could definitely argue that it's been a great thing for the locals. More people, more money, better quality of life. Tourism is now Indonesia's main export, but it's a very limited resource. Local authorities have no long-term vision. They want a quick return on invested capital and tourism enables that. The irony in all of this is that one day, tourists won't find what they're expecting in Bali anymore. Dirty, oh no, look at all the rubbish. Oh no. So I went to Bali about three years ago for a weekend getaway because it was cheap and it was close to Singapore. And yeah, it was all right. It was, uh, it was fun, it was kind of dirty, a little bit crowded, but overall it was a really fun place. But it was nothing like the tropical paradise that I see on Instagram every day. Bali is everywhere on Instagram. We all want to get that perfect shot in a flowy dress on a swing in the rice field, eating breakfast in an infinity pool on a love heart shaped bird's nest on the beach with a coconut so that we can show our friends that we live, laugh, love our life. Okay, but in all seriousness, I don't think that there's anything wrong with taking photos when you're on a holiday. Obviously, it's the best way for you to remember a great time in your life when you were relaxed and having fun with your friends. The problem is when the photo is not an accurate representation of reality. We all try our best to make our photos look great, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. National Geographic photographers have been capturing the best version of everywhere they go for years, and it's done nothing but great things for tourism. So why is Instagram any different? Well, as a fellow travel influencer, I've come to understand that the best photos that do well on Instagram are the ones that are perfect. The ones that make your feed look bright, colorful, and perfectly curated. However, not everywhere that you go looks as perfect as you want it to be. So what do you do? You cut out the people, adjust the lighting, and make the water more blue ass than usual. YouTube's a little different because not all the popular videos have to be perfect, but when Instagram is your job, there's a pressure to find perfection even when there is none. The problem with beautiful travel photos in your face non-stop is raised expectations. When people go to Tagalalang rice fields and expect the tranquil hidden gem that they saw on Instagram and instead find an overpopulated tourist magnet with a little old man charging you money to wear his hat and carry his baskets, they'll no doubt be disappointed. So when Jess and I traveled to an amazing, amazing location known as Tempuk, Tempukseu, Tempukseu, I'd only seen a couple of photos of it on Instagram and one video from Los LeBlanc, but basically in my head, I thought it was going to be the Instagram waterfall of my dreams and holy balls, it actually was.
Unfortunately, on the day that we went there, it was overcast and it was crazy misty, so I couldn't actually get that drone shot that I dreamed about. A great example of disappointment due to raised expectations from Instagram. However, it was just as magical as I imagined it would be and surprisingly not even that busy. However, one thing I did not expect was the trek down there to be so unglamorous. The path down was slippery, unkept, falling apart in some places, and half of the path was actually on a waterfall. Luckily, we were actually really prepared for it, so it ended up being heaps of fun. I felt like I was female Indiana Jones getting all dirty, trekking into the jungle, looking for treasure. And by treasure, I mean fresh content for Instagram. But we did see some other people there who maybe weren't expecting that kind of a trip because they were wearing really nice clean clothes and pure white converse that were about to be obliterated by that hike. Look at my shoes. I couldn't help but wonder, was their experience made worse by raised expectations and or not being prepared for that kind of adventure? I didn't ask, but I could only assume. So what's the solution to this problem? Do we stop editing our photos before we put them up on Instagram? Or do we just stop posting altogether? No, I don't think that that's necessary at all. I think a solution that might help is something that I've seen a lot of other Instagrammers already start to do on their Instagram page. And that is when you post a photo using the multiple photo feature, you can post candid photos of you and your friends, goofs and fails, behind the scenes, before and after kinds of things, writing a detailed caption of how they got there. And I've even seen a guy named George Hammond on Instagram and he instead of geotagging just the one location where he took that photo he geotags the whole region therefore increasing tourism to the whole area rather than just that one beach and I think that's really a better way to be promoting a country and if you're a tourist looking for a more sustainable way to travel I would say steer clear of the touristy places there's so much beauty out there and plenty of places that could really do with your tourist dollar and it'll probably end up being way cheaper for you but if you still want to go to Bali and jump on a swing by all means go for it have a great time, take some photos, but maybe also take the time to appreciate the locals and buy something from local vendors rather than just from the resort. Have a great time, have a drink with your friends, but for the love of Pete, don't be a drunk bogan on the beach. I hope that you enjoyed this video concept idea. I just want to clarify quickly, I don't think that Instagram is a bad thing at all. I think it's a wonderful thing that's helped me find incredible travel locations just like East Java in Indonesia. I'm always open to more suggestions on ways that we can travel more sustainably, so leave them in the comments down below. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, and if you don't, then I'm sorry. Stick around through the message from our sponsor for some bloopers. Woohoo! This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is, of course, the website that helps helps you build a website and build your online presence and help run your business in a very easy to manage way. I've spoken about Squarespace in the past and I finally got around to making my site and holy crap, it was so easy to do. I thought it was going to take me a bit longer, but it actually took me like an hour or something. And I'm really happy with the final result. I really love the fact that I can now just direct people to one website rather than having my stuff scattered all around the internet. If you're watching this video, then you're probably interested in travel and or photography. So Squarespace has their own list of professional portfolio designs. You can display projects in customizable galleries and add password protected pages to share private work with clients. And they all look beautiful and professional. And Speaking of geotagging, you can also geotag your posts if you wish as well. They really have so much to offer to so many different people. So if you haven't already, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash currently Hannah for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video and thank you also for watching it. Uh, now you can enjoy some loopers. When people go to Tagalog, when people go to Tagalog Pride, when people go to Tagalog Pride, it's inspired people. It's inspired people all around the world. Gracie, get down. Gracie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, all right. <laughs> Woo. Let's 
swearing? No, you know my nieces watch this. Flaps. <laughs> <laughs> crikey. No, you know you say like crikey. Crikey. No, no, crikey. Crikey. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Crikey. Yeah, show sweet from me. <laughs> Give me the fucking Milo. It's not even close. Fox a kangaroo. <laughs>